Hi, I'm Norm Abram. Welcome to the New Yankee Workshop. Today we're going to build a garden table. It's made out of teak and it's meant to go with an English garden bench I built a few years ago. It turns out they're difficult to find. I'll show you in a minute, right here on the New Yankee Workshop. The New Yankee Workshop features the craftsmanship of Norm Abram. Well, for the last several weeks, I've been prowling around my local garden and patio furniture stores looking for a low table to go with my English garden bench. Now, here's one in Wicker. That would be nice out on the porch. Now, there's no shortage of large, full-size tables. They come in wood, steel, vinyl, wrought iron, just about anything you want. And now, here's another low table out of Wicker with a glass top. Fancy. Ah, now here's one. Combination of a few things, I guess. Metal legs, some wicker on the bottom, and a glass top. That would be nice. Not quite what I'm looking for. Now the manager tells me that the wood furniture flies out of this store, but there's a couple pieces I might be interested in. Oh yeah, here's a couple tables. Sort of a rattan look with a glass top. Still not quite what I want. It's beginning to look like if I want a garden table, I'm going to have to build one myself. Well, here's what I came up with for a table. It's about 16 inches high, and it's three feet in diameter. It's lightweight because instead of making the top from solid boards, I use thin slats and I space them out. It's made out of teak, so it's a perfect companion to this garden bench I built a few years ago. Now, a word about the teak. Our supplier assures us that it is plantation grown. It was meant to be harvested into timber and into lumber for boat builders and furniture makers. It was not taken from the endangered native species. Now, if you'd like to build one of these, a measured drawing is available with the materials list, and you'll hear more about that before this program ends. Now, let me show you how I built this table. Before we get started today, I want to take a moment to talk about shop safety. Be sure to read, understand, and follow all the safety rules that come with your power tools. Knowing how to use your power tools properly will greatly reduce the risk of personal injury. Now here at the shop, I make sure to wear ear protection. And of course, the most important safety rule is to wear these safety glasses. <laughs> Now here I've cut one of eight identical pieces to make the perimeter of the table top. Now each piece is cut at a 22 and a half degree angle on each end so that it fits up against the adjacent piece. I've cut three pieces so far. I need five more pieces to complete the octagon. Having a saw stop assures that every piece will be identical. Now glue alone will not be sufficient to hold these butt joints together. So what I want to do is cut a groove in the end of each piece so I can insert these splines. And that'll give me plenty of glue surface area and add a lot of strength to the joint. To make the groove for the spline, I've set up my dado head cutter. And the width is the same as the thickness of the spline. Now I'm going to use my tenoning jig to hold each piece. This is very handy for holding narrow pieces in a vertical position, especially when you're running it through the blade. It keeps my hands far away. Now I've also taken the time to make sure that the slot is going to be perfectly centered in each piece. Teakwood contains a lot of natural oil. The glue that I'm going to use on these joints is a one-part waterproof glue. So I called the manufacturer, and they recommended that I should clean all the joints with acetone. The best place to do that on a nice day like this is outdoors, where there's plenty of ventilation. 
gluing up eight splines, 16 slots, and getting everything clamped together before the glue sets up is the challenge here. But we'll do it. Now I'm fortunate enough to have what's known as a band clamp, a strap of material and some plastic clips which fit the angle of the octagon and then a device which allows me to tighten the whole band up, pulling the joints together. Okay, now that does a pretty good job, but I probably will add a couple bar clamps just to snug it up. Okay, that looks pretty good. While the top dries, let's take a look at the base. Each leg tapers along the inside edge. You may not notice it, but it adds a lot of grace to the piece. To make the taper, I'm going to use my table saw and this tapering jig. It's a homemade jig that has a hinge pivot on one end and up at the other end there's an adjustment bar and a stop against which I put the piece. Now I've laid out the piece with a mark because I want to keep the first portion straight so the rail will meet it squarely. And You can see as I push it towards the saw, it will start to cut just beyond the line and if I were to push the jig all the way through and cut it, it would leave about an inch and five-eighths down at the bottom. It works great. Even though my saw blade gives me a pretty smooth cut, a quick pass through the joiner will dress it up. Now the legs are connected together with rails. The rails have tenons that fit into mortises. To cut the mortise in the leg, I've set up my mortising machine with a half inch mortising chisel and a bit. The bit drills out most of the wood and the chisel squares it up. I begin forming the tenons on the ends of the rails by making the shoulder cuts at the top and the bottom and then nibbling away the excess material. Now without changing any of the setup except for the height of the blade, which I've lowered, I can now make the shoulder cut across the face. Returning to my tenoning jig, I can now mount the rail vertically to make the cheek cut to remove the material to finish forming the tenon. Now I've sanded all the pieces smooth and now I'm just knocking off any of the sharp edges. But once again, before I do any glue up, I want to clean all the joints with acetone. 
One of the reasons that this type of joint works so well is because there's so much surface area for the glue. Now with glue applied to the tenon and inside the mortise, we just slip the two pieces together and clamp them. Well, now that the glue has dried on the joints of the top perimeter, I'm ready to transform the octagon into a circle. And I'm going to use this jig, which is just a piece of plywood about seven inches wide with a line drawn down the center. And in the middle, there's a block of wood that's the same thickness as the perimeter with a doll right in the center. What I want to do is align any of the joints of the octagon right over that pencil line. And then I want to measure to the doll in the center to get it perfectly centered. So on this side I have 19 and 5 sixteenths. And on this side I have 20 and 5 sixteenths. So I want to slide it down about a half inch. 19 and 13. 19 and 13, that's good. Now I'm going to slide the whole assembly off the workbench and clamp it so I can secure it with a screw. Okay, now I'm just going to slide it down and put a screw in the other end. The next part of the jig is this extended base plate that I've installed on my router. I took off the standard base plate and used it as a template to drill holes in this piece of quarter inch plywood. Then I attached the plywood with the same screws that came with the router. I also drilled some holes for different diameters. This is for the inside radius. This is for the radius of the rabbit, which will support the slats of the top. And this is the outside radius. The cutter that I'm using is a half inch diameter straight cutter. And it has two carbide edges, which are good on this teak because it can be tough on the cutters. Now what I want to do is cut the outside radius first. So I'm going to set the base on the hole that's furthest away over that dowel, plug the router in, and it'll take a few passes because I want to take about a quarter of an inch each time. Boy, that works great. Now we'll move the router and cut the inside diameter. Okay. Now that takes care of the inside and the outside diameter. Now I want to readjust my router so I can make a rabbit around this top inside edge. The only adjustment that I've made to the router is to set this stop so that the bit will not plunge more than 3 eighths of an inch into the work, which is the thickness of my slats. I've also reset the pivot point. Now I can start forming the rabbit.
Well, let's see how we're doing. Here's one of the slats that I'll be using for the tabletop. It's nice and flush with the perimeter, so the depth is good. But I want to make the rabbet a little bit wider to give me more support for the slat and plenty of room to put screws in from the underside to secure them. So I'm going to change the pivot point one last time and make two more passes with the router. Well, we made great progress today. Tomorrow, we'll fit the slats and install them, build a support system that goes underneath, and then attach it to the base. Good morning. What a beautiful day to finish our outdoor table. Now, this table hasn't spent any time outdoors yet, so the joints between the slats and the perimeter are nice and tight. But even after it has been outdoors for a while, I don't expect them to open up because teak or any wood doesn't move very much along its length. So I want to take care in carefully fitting each piece. After the pieces are fitted, I'll attach them using a dab of glue and some brass screws. I'll also put a stiffener piece right down the middle of the table. Let's start fitting those slats. There. I've just laid out the inside diameter of the top on this piece of plywood. And I'll set the top aside and start working with our slats. Now the slats are 3 eighths of an inch thick and an inch and 3 quarters wide. I want to pick the good side and face it down. And then in between each slat, I want to put these quarter inch spacers. Now, as I set the slats in place, as long as I keep these spacers inside that line I just drew, they won't get in the way. Now, I've got to keep remembering the good side goes down because I'm working on the underside of the table. OK, now I'll take the top and lay it on the slats. And I've put a center point on two of the segments opposite each other, and I want to align one of the spacers with that center point. And then clamp the top in place. OK, that's not going to go anywhere. Now we can start to lay out the slats. Now this is a little tricky because I'm reaching under that rabbit. But a really sharp pencil, carefully reaching under there and scribing a mark, is the best way to do it. Good. Now we can remove all of the clamps and start cutting. Now when I make the cut, I want to stay shy of the line. Then using my sander, I want to sand to the line. We'll try the fit. That's good. Okay, this should be the last piece. And that fits good. Now I want to bevel all the edges. And to do that, once again, I'm going to return to my little hand plane and just knock off that corner. Now, just as I've done with all other parts that are glued together, I've cleaned the rabbit with some acetone and the bottom end of each slat. Now I can just put a little dab of glue at each location and set all the slats back in place.
with all the slats glued, I now have to clamp a piece of wood across them so that I can flip the whole thing over. Okay, now I just gotta flip it over carefully. And I'll be ready to pre-drill for the screws. Okay, now I want to switch to another drill with a very small bit and pre-drill into the slat. And that's just so it won't split. And finally, this brass screw, which is a number six by three quarter inch. One screw and the end of each slat. Now my stiffener piece I fitted like the slats by cutting the ends and then sanding them to fit between the perimeter. I'm going to pre-drill for some more brass screws, except this time glue is not required. Now I want to take the base and center it on the underside of the table top and put a mark on the outside of each leg. Now that's so that I can add some filler strips under each rail all the way around to add more support to the slats. Okay, now it's time for a little final sanding, particularly along these edges, both top and bottom. With a quarter inch radius round over bit, I'm easing the edges. Four two and a quarter inch screws through pre drilled and counterboard holes are all that's necessary to attach the base to the top. Now I think we should take it outside and see how it plays with that garden bench. And that's how we built the teak table. It looks just right. Of course, it's going to take some time for this teak to age like the bench, but in time, they'll look like they came from the same piece of wood.